Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, we've got a bit of news to go over um, as far as Bitcoin in the space, but we also had some economic data come out today. And I just want to get into a little bit of the bear case on Bitcoin. And, you know, you might be going, whoa, Drake, Bitcoin's going up today. Why are we all of a sudden busting out the bears? and saying Bitcoin's going to go down. Now, guys, that's not really what I'm saying, but I do like to keep my feelers out for any bear cases that might have some grit. And this one has been kind of the, kind of the thought, the, the bear, bearish thought that kind of holds some weight, in my opinion. Um, but we're going to get into that. You know, I think it's fair that you guys know the bear case as well. I'm about as permable on Bitcoin as it gets, but this is the one case where I, I think, you know, possibly might affect Bitcoin short term. So we're going to get into all of that guys. But before we do remember, I am. Uh, supporting for them Animal Sanctuary this month. And if you guys can, please go over and donate a few dollars to these guys. This is their website. Um, and you can see right on their, their front page, you can go over and donate to their, their PayPal. They've also got a Patreon. They've got their Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as well as everything you need to know about this animal sanctuary. They are a 501c, so anything you donate to them uh, is tax deductible. So go over and help them out, help yourself out, and do something positive today. So go over, help for them, animal sanctuary, and very much appreciated as always on my part. Now, Jumping in over here, guys, I did a video. Um, it was actually my last video, but in my timeline, it was two videos ago. And it was very, you know, kind of the political landscape of Bitcoin and how Biden is playing it and how Trump is playing it. And I think there's some confusion out there to where the, where I stand for some reason. I try to be I try to be pretty clear on uh my views that I don't think it matters. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much a political nihilist, guys. I don't really care if Biden wins. I don't care if Trump wins, really. Um, but it seems like there was some confusion. Some people thought I was voting one way or the other. And I just want to show you this chart. And this is why... As far as Bitcoin goes, I don't think it matters. Now, look, you've got Obama. We had 2009-ish, uh, we had um, Bitcoin come out. And so for the entire two terms of Obama, Bitcoin went up. And then we had Trump. And guess what? Bitcoin went up. And then we had Biden and Bitcoin has gone up, even though we've seen more regulatory attacks on Bitcoin than we ever have this with this Biden administration, it's still gone up. So guys, listen, um, you know, back four years ago, back here in, you know, Trump's period, right? We had Trump saying that Bitcoin was a scam. Bitcoin was competition for the dollar and he didn't support it, you know, yada, 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 on and on. And so during his time, Trump kind of jumped on the railroad tracks and tried to, I don't know, bad talk Bitcoin at very least. And back in the last election, it was pretty widely seen that Biden would be a good thing for cryptocurrency. This was pretty commonly held view in cryptocurrency circles. Now, Biden didn't come out and say that he was pro Bitcoin or anything, but there were people waiting in the wings that would be uh, put in to positions, aka 
Gary Gensler that were seen to be very positive for Bitcoin. Now, the reason uh, Gensler was seen to be positive for Bitcoin was he taught blockchain technology at MIT. He was very pro crypto in his talks and in his lectures. So it was very um, positively seen that a Biden win would be positive for Bitcoin. And then we had Gensler get in and actually take chair and then FTX happened and it kind of backfired. But in the time, Bitcoin has still continued on and made progress. Um, you know, we've gone from uh, like 10,000 when Biden was elected to like 70,000 now. So we're still making progress. But Biden has seemingly taken it upon himself to, you know, back when Trump was talking bad about Bitcoin, we now have B Biden doing kind of the same thing. So, guys, I don't think it, it matters who gets into office. To be clear, Bitcoin is going to do its thing. And whether you jump on the tracks and try and stop it, that's a completely different thing. You know, that is going to be the hill that you're going to die on. We saw that, you know, uh, possibly, I think Bitcoin possibly um, influenced the outcome of the elections last time with Trump being anti-Bitcoin. And now I think this election, we are definitely going to see Bitcoin influence the election. And if Biden wants to jump on the tracks and try and stop the Bitcoin train, that's definitely going to be the hill that he dies on, in my opinion. So I don't think either one is going to be good or bad for Bitcoin, to be honest. You know, Bitcoin is going to carry on. Bitcoin is resilient. But yeah, I think more than politicians influencing Bitcoin, Bitcoin is going to influence politics, if that makes sense. So leaving it at that, guys, we're going to get into some other news. Uh, this will happen tomorrow. It says uh, Australia's first spot Bitcoin ETF with direct Bitcoin holdings to go live on Tuesday. Now, this is good for Bitcoin. As we've seen this entire year, the world and the world's markets are continually opening up to Bitcoin. We've seen the US spot Bitcoin ETFs go live in January. Then we saw Hong Kong going live just uh, last month, I believe. And now we've, we're seeing, oh, we saw London go live just a week ago or so. And now Australia is going live. So just show, goes to show that Bitcoin is just starting to go mainstream, guys. So this is a good thing if you're in Bitcoin already or if you're getting in now, you're pretty early in this new phase of global adoption of Bitcoin. So I know, you know, short term when you're always watching the charts, you know, every day is is like a nail biter, whether it's going up or down or sideways or whatever. But guys, we are early in this next phase of of Bitcoin. So stick to your plan. Always have a plan. Stick to it and don't get shaken out. Now I want to jump jump over to the charts for a second. We have seen today we've we've had this uh symmetric um triangle kind of playing out for Bitcoin and we've kind of had a fake out it seems anyway we're we're still kind of battling over whether we're breaking out of this uh, symmetrical triangle or not. But guys, look at look at this. Um, if 
you can also kind of, if you zoom out, it's very much uh, kind of like a bull flag. We've got the pole here, and then we've got this, this flag coming off. And this is a bullish signal in the chart. So whatever way you want to look at it, whether you're looking at a symmetric um, triangle playing out or this bull flag, the chart looks good for Bitcoin is the point. But I also want to get into a metric here for a second. Um, down here at the bottom, um, let me see if I can. Oh, I've got to turn. We've got the uh, stoch stochastic RSI down here at the bottom, guys. So right down here, we are just having this blue line come up above the orange line in the stochastic RSI here. Now, if you look back, let me zoom out a bit. If you look back, the last time we were at these levels and the blue broke above the orange, we were right here. And you, you can see what happened right here at this candle and what continued to happen after, we, after the blue broke above the, the orange in the stochastic RSI. We went from uh, about 58,000 all the way back up here to 71, 72,000 again, guys. And then uh, again, back right here, we broke above that blue line, broke above the orange, and we, we had this move to the upside. Then going all the way back, uh, back to January or February, um, February, 24th, right here, we broke above again, and you can see that we just had this massive movement up to that 73,000 mark. So guys, the, the RSI, the, stoch the stochastic RSI in the chart is kind of showing that we are just breaking above this orange with the blue line, and we could be making a move up here in the future. So could happen. We are also in that post having sideways era that I've talked about before the having even happened. So we, we could continue sideways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you never know, but this, this stochastic RSI is looking pretty prime as well as this bull flag that's playing out right here. So things are looking good now. I do want to uh, come in. We did have that economic da data that came out this morning, and that is right here. Actually, let's go over to the hourly just for some context. We go to the hourly chart. You can see we broke above 70,000 this morning right here. We broke out of this, this um, purple triangle and hit above 70,000 right here. And then right as soon as we got that economic data, we dumped all the way back down to where we started the day out at. And we've, we've kind of come up and we're kind of chopping around now, but let's go over to that economic data. Looks like I've got to get back out to the daily. So it, the, the data that came out is the ISM manufacturing PMI. Now, what that is, is it's kind of a gauge on what manufacturing is doing. And it came in lower than forecasted and lower than the previous. So what this means is manufacturing is slowing down, which also means that the economy is not doing as hot as it has been. So the economy is slowing down. Um, and that can lead into an economic recession. 
Now, an economic recession is kind of what I was talking about in the beginning of this video. An economic recession could be bad for Bitcoin. Bitcoin would mo most likely go down if we do go into a, an economic recession. However, the economy going down is one of the Fed's, the Federal Reserve's, um, dual mandate, right? Is they're, they're concerned with inflation and they're concerned with the economy. So that is one of their prerequisites for cutting rates is if, if the economy starts going down, yes, it could mean down, downward pressure on Bitcoin's price, but it's what the Fed needs to cut rates. And I've been saying for a while, guys, they, they need to cut rates because they want to, uh, they want to stimulate the banks first and foremost, above everything, above inflation, above the economy, they need confidence in the banking system. So they, they are really wanting to cut rates to save the banks. So we do have that. If they do cut rates, that's going to send Bitcoin up. So we do have that downward pressure on the economy, which could mean downward pressure on Bitcoin. That is the bear case for Bitcoin is if we have the economy fail and start going down, that's the bear case for Bitcoin. That's when Bitcoin will go down. However, we do not we will not see the economy crash without the Fed stepping in to save it. And when they do that, they'll be injecting money into the system, printing. They'll turn the printers on. They'll print out money. Inflation will continue to go up and Bitcoin will skyrocket at that point. Now, it's bad for inflation. It's going to be bad for Everyone, when we go to the grocery store, when we go to get gas, everything, it's not going to be good. And this is why you need to be in, in something, some kind of asset to protect yourself against this constant money printing by the Federal Reserve. And, you know, the last FOMC meeting, we had a bank fail right before that. And nobody talked about it during that FOMC meeting. And that very same day, guys, we had it announced that the Treasury was going to start bailing out banks, essentially. Um, I'm going to jump back over here to uh, this tweet. Now, this says QE, quantitative easing money printing is starting today. This was on the 29th, guys, but this was announced the last FOMC meeting, uh, not in the FOMC meeting, but that same exact day, the Treasury announced that they were going to do this. Now they're going to start, or they did start the 29th, uh, buying back um, Treasury bonds. So the U.S. Treasury is launching, launching its first buyback program since 2002. They plan to buy back USTs up to $2 billion and TIPS up to $500 million per operation. It says opt out of the system of money debasement by Bitcoin. So guys, what they're doing here is a lot of banks are upside down in their bonds. And to save the banks that are, you know, we've, I've shown you guys over and over, um, Reuters uh, and Bloomberg and all of these guys are saying that we've got a lot of bank failures on the horizon. And what they're doing here is they're offering to buy back these bonds that banks are underwater in. So this is a bailout for the banks. And what this is doing is that it's basically printing money. It's not the traditional way that everybody watches uh, in the fact that the Fed's not lowering rates and printing more money and giving out 
cheaper loans. This is the Treasury's doing. But it's essentially the same thing. This is injecting liquidity into the system, and it will not be good for inflation. So get out of that system of money debasement into something. And guys, Bitcoin is the fastest horse when it comes to monetary debasement. Um, I did just see another um, chart that I want to show you guys. Let me just pull it up. I wasn't planning on showing you guys this, but um, let's just see if I can find it here. Um, Okay, let me jump over here to this chart. Now, this is Bitcoin, the QQQ, which is a ETF that tracks a lot of technology and the S&P index to money supply. So when we have the, um, the Treasury injecting money into the system, which they're doing with this Treasury buyback, this is how it affects these three different asset classes. We've got the orange line is the S&P index to, to M2 money supply. Then we've got the QQQ in this teal, um, this teal line, both of which pretty much look like they're flatlining, although um, they are going up. As you can see right here, the QQQ went up 202% to the money supply, the M2 money supply, and the S&P did 51%. Now, this big blue line obviously is the Bitcoin. The old Bitcoin. And it is making massive moves uh, in, in relation to the money supply. So money supply comes out and guys, we are just, we're just beginning the, this upward trend. And I, I don't know, this, this is just interesting because it, it kind of shows you that Bitcoin is the fastest. It's pretty much the only horse in the race. You know, when you compare to anything traditional market, uh, traditional finance wise, no matter how well they're doing respective to their markets, nothing touches Bitcoin. So I don't know, guys, it, uh, it's, it's some crazy times. The economy going down definitely, in my opinion, is the only bear case that really holds some grit when it comes to Bitcoin. And I, th I think that is the one play where we do see Bitcoin actually losing. Uh, but it's a very short term uh, bear case, in my opinion. You know, it may last a few months, but this cycle is still intact. Bitcoin cycle is still intact. And we will see if, if the economy does falter, we will see the Fed and other agencies step in to boost it. And when that does happen, guys, we've seen what Bitcoin does when, when that happens. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much the video for today. Remember, go over and help out the animals at For Them Animal Sanctuary. Their link to their uh, web page is in the description of the video. So get into the description down below click on their link and go over and help them out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.